Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Hey there, Post Institute. This is Christy Saul, the co-founder, coming at you live with the best little parenting show on the internet. I hope you guys are doing well on this beautiful Monday evening. First, before we get started on our topic tonight, I want to plug these two books. That isn't even, look, that's an old one. That is not even what I meant to pick up. Here we go. Let's try again. Da, 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 da. There we go. Brian's book, From Fear to Love, that you can get on promotion at feartolovebook.com. And The Great Behavior Breakdown, that is available on Amazon as well as postinstitute.com. Hey, Amy, I see you watching. It's good to see you, love. I hope you guys are all doing well this evening. Um, so Christmas is on Friday. And uh, hey, Melanie, I see you're watching too. It's kind of funny how it just shows a few people and tells me that you guys are watching. Um, I wanted to share just a few a few Christmas stories. I'm not sure... You know how I do. We just get to talking, and who knows where we might end up. But I do know that um, hmm, when I was younger, uh, in my 20s and 30s, um, I worked two, two different positions in my professional life that had had massive, a massive impact on me in my understanding of humanity and just in my personal growth. One was uh, my very first job, and I was actually still in college and finishing up my graduate degree, and that was uh, working in juvenile detention. And so I worked in jail for kids. Um, and then another position that I had was working as a home-based therapist going into families' homes. And many of the families' homes that I went into were families who were um, trying to maintain custody of their children or they were working to uh, regain custody of their children, and so I have um, I have very diverse experiences of knowing the struggles that many families have experienced, and knowing the struggles many children have experienced. And uh, with this week beginning, kind of what to me feels like the real crunch of Christmas, um, it just makes me think of. Um, just a, a few different things that I wanted to share. One is a personal story that took place when I was um, first working as a home-based therapist and I was also working as a waitress because I didn't make enough money in my professional job and so I had two jobs and um, a lot of the young people who I was working alongside, they wanted to help somebody that they knew really needed help during the holidays. And so um, they asked me if I knew of a family and I did, of course, a family I'd been working with for quite a while actually. And they had three children and um, uh, the poverty was real. Um, it was before my eyes every time I went there and every time I spent time with them, the stress was real. And so um, the uh, people that I, the wait staff that wanted to participate in this, contributed their tip money, and me and one of my waitstaff co-workers went and bought presents at Walmart, and we delivered them to the family's home at a time when the kids weren't there so that the parents could take um, responsibility, you know, they could get the credit. They could get the credit for giving the gifts. They didn't, uh, it could just come from them, and so that was all pretty cool and pretty exciting. And so the holidays passed, and I went out for my next home visit with that family, and the children never received the presents. Um, all of the presents had gotten returned to Walmart for cash. So the lesson in that for me was that when you give gifts, there are no strings attached. It was not for me to say whether that was right or wrong. It was not my position. 
not a place for that. And we have to realize that sometimes people are really living in a, a very desperate place. You know, I don't really know what happened to the many. That's not my business either. So I just want to share with you um, you know, gifts are lovely. It's wonderful to get presents. And yet some families are in a place that um, they feel like they need to use the money for other things. And we have to just be okay with that. In my heart, that's what I feel. That's what I believe. And I believe it's important for us all to recognize and acknowledge that um, poverty is a very real thing. And sometimes people are choosing between keeping a gift or returning it and using the money to pay their electric bill. And they might be using the money to buy drugs or alcohol. I don't, you know, I don't know. It's not my place. That's not the point of this message. It's just a point of um, opening our heart to understanding that um, humanity is, um, you know, we're just kind of messy and we're just kind of doing the best we can. And figuring out the best way to serve. I think we really have to be attuned to that and that when we give gifts, there literally are no strings attached. So I was talking to um, a long, long time post parent, foster parent, this family's fostered hundreds of children, honestly, and they've adopted um, seven total over their time in serving. And I remember about three years ago, the dad telling me, um, he, he said, I can't tell you how many kids have come into our home. And Christmas was this really anxious time frame. And when I got to know the, the children better and they shared their Christmas stories, oftentimes the stories that they shared was this sense of frantic urgency that the parents had to try to find some way to get gifts. Um, and then I've seen that played out over the years with, you know, extended family, people that I know personally that, you know, um, they're just like scraping by month after month after month. And then Christmas comes and they feel like they have to pull off this huge financial feat um, in order to to somehow uh, do something magical for their children to the extent that I've seen people um, who've gone to jail uh, right around Christmas time. Uh, because they did illegal things in an effort to to try to get presents. You know, whether it was stealing money, robbing people, um, stealing gifts, those kinds of things. And so, um, you know, I want to share that out loud. I want to talk about that out loud on our Facebook page because the Post Institute, you know, we've committed to serving families who are raising children from tough places. And I feel like it's so important for us to understand this, for us to understand that, you know, there's a whole mix of energy that can come with the holidays and the excitement and uh, there can be fear, you know, it's just a different kind of stress. And then, you know, we have, we have people in our, in our network, people, our loved ones, family members, friends who are, you know, they're grieving loss. Um, there are people who, you know, maybe they're recently divorced and this is like their first holiday to be a single person going through the holidays. There are people who are grieving recent losses like within like today, today, um, tomorrow, I'm going to be going to a funeral service for a dear friend of mine. You know, we just have to really, um, I don't know, I just feel like it's a special time for us to just be really gentle to just have this special place of tenderness and awareness for all that is going on, all the undercurrents of activity. Um, and, and we can just, by having that gentle space within us and just to, to, you know, love is such a powerful force. And it can be so healing when we have that sort of gentle understanding for things that our children may have experienced and to be able to just open our hearts up to hear their stories, to hear what they've experienced. When we start notice, noticing that, you know, maybe their behavior's a little agitated or maybe they're withdrawn or, you know, they're either internalizing it or they're externalizing it. But just to maybe just sit with them for a minute and, uh, you know, you can ask, you know, what's going on, baby? Because 
I know when you're, when I see these behaviors and I see you act like that, I just know that there's something that's stirred up for you. And, you know, if you can tell me, I'd really, I'd really love to hear. I'd really love to listen. And if they're not able to tell you the stories, it's okay. You know, we have to understand that our children, um, you know, they have such complex histories. And I think the other piece is that for them, you know, during the holidays, they may, they may miss their families more than what we realize. They may be really grateful that they're with you and feel sad that they're missing their family at the same time. And for us to be able to speak into that, for us to be able to say, I see, I see your sadness and I, I feel your loyalty to your family. And at the same time, I see you trying to enjoy the moment and I just wanna acknowledge that and let you know how much I love you how much I, I feel for you that you're trying to do all of this as such a young person. Our kids, many of our kids have experienced things that we, we have such little depth of understanding. We may have knowledge, we may have head knowledge, but to have really deep understanding of that, you have to sit with those stories a little bit and you have to allow yourself to truly imagine and try to put yourself in their shoes during those times. And, you know, I think about children from orphanages and I wonder what their holiday experiences were like there. And so we, you know, it's important, just like our stories are important. And, you know, we, we live our lives by the stories that we tell ourselves. And so to, um, to create an atmosphere of sharing and to create an atmosphere where your children's stories can be shared, where we can embrace them. And, you know, sometimes those painful stories, they get told with a smile and a laugh because that's how we cope and that's okay because at least we're sharing. So as we kind of step into the, the week of Christmas, um, I think that um, to me, it's just really important that we have that level of mindful awareness that um, different people have very different experiences and um, our children may be struggling with grief. They may be struggling with issues of loyalty that they may even feel guilty for the joy and the excitement that they're feeling. And so, you know, it can be a, a bit of a tangle. Um, and yet we're here. You're here. You're solid. You're a firm foundation for your children. And to just open up, just to my sharing these thoughts is just um, an invitation to open up for all the possibilities, to hold ourselves in an open position of all the possibilities of what they may be feeling and that you are a wealth of love that you can tap into greater sources of love so that that can just pour from you to your children a depth of compassion, a depth of empathy, a depth of understanding, a depth of knowing that you don't need to make them choose that they can love and be loved by lots of people. And so uh, I think that's it for tonight. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, I hope there's something in this. To me, this feels like a message worth coming back and listening to, maybe at a time that's quiet, so you can just sense the depth of compassion and understanding that I really want to invite you into. Uh, remember what Brian tells us, that in any moment, and I think especially when we're feeling sort of the adrenaline of the holidays coming and maybe our own anxiety of, am I a good enough parent? Did I pick out good enough gifts? Are we going to have a good enough celebration? That that level of anxiety can really, um, that can, you know, in our brains, you know, that can get our amygdala hijacked and that energy, that anxious energy can be a real trip for our children because they'll take that on as their own. That's that's what they tend to do. They feel like there's something they've done to somehow create that. And it'll also put them in a place where they, where they are anxious as well because that's their sensitive protective amygdalas, right? So remember in any given moment, we have two choices. We can act out of those same blueprints of stress and fear and overwhelm, or we can take one to two to three to 10, however many deep breaths it takes. And we can choose love. 
And so I hope you're able to choose love. I hope you're able to calm any anxieties that you may be feeling and to remember that you are good enough, that you may have your own blueprints of challenges around the holidays, of anxiety around the holidays. And uh, just to take some time, take a little moment for yourself to take those deep breaths and to remind yourself that you're loved, that you're uniquely and beautifully created, that you are a good enough parent for your children, and to let the love that you have, that's the most important thing above all else, to let the love that you have for them shine from your eyes and shine from your heart. Much love to you guys, and we'll see you all tonight. Join us live on weekdays at 6.30 Central Time on Facebook at the Post Institute. Don't forget to get your copy of Brian's best-selling book, From Fear to Love, on promotion. Just pay shipping and handling at www.feartolovebook.com. That's www.feartolovebook.com.